Hey, I'm Shiraz, and I'm about to shift someone's limiting beliefs, get them to step out of a story that they have been addicted to for possibly months, possibly decades. Now, here's the cool thing. I'm going to ask them, are you willing to step out of that story? And when I ask them that, you can say yes, if you have the same story, and it's going to shift for you too. You may actually feel it in your body. Now, when people shift, there is a shift in energy. I tend to yawn and cough even through the Zoom platform. So be prepared for that. It's a little weird. I know. I don't know why my body does it. I just go with it at this point. So watch the video. Check out more videos that I've done to get more shifts and have a good time. So um, <laughs> so uh, I've been struggling at work lately, um, even though things had been progressively declining there were certain things about it that i could still find joy in and those yeah. were kind of the things that i was holding on to and i've been i've been considering a job change for a while and i finally took the plunge and started you know started the process this past season yeah. and ever since i've returned the things that used to bring me joy don't anymore and okay. every day i'm kind of like in tears either when i'm going or when i'm coming when i'm coming back my i've attempted exploring this on my own and the the closest connection that i got was there was a possibility that i was going to get the new job much sooner than expected and i had some um, resistance to that okay. and uh felt like i would be leaving the old job behind and leaving the people there behind and so i'm wondering if my subconscious was like we're gonna make the old the old job suck really badly so you don't feel conflicted but now I'm I'm going to be in this job for possibly, you know, at least the year, if not a few more years. Okay. Well. So do you need to make your job suck to be sure of your decision? <laughs> See, when I ask myself that, I say no, but in front of you, it's... <laughs> yeah, because yeah. there's like a truth ray that comes out of me when we're talking. <laughs> yep. Easier to lie to me. So are you willing to step out of the story that you have to make your old job, your current job suck to make sure you don't change your mind? Yes. <laughs> Can you trust your decisions? <laughs> um that's something i've been working on okay i'm Are trying you... i'm attempting to move out of the uh, a lot of where the lack of trust came from was feeling like it had to be a permanent sort of thing like uh -huh. that a decision was a decision and that had to be like it was going to be until the end of time so i'm in, attempting yeah. to shift to right now yeah are you willing to step out of the story that you can't trust your own decisions? Yes. Oh, almost. Not I quite that clear. <laughs> okay. If you make a decision, are you ever allowed to change your mind? Yes. Okay, so that's not coming up true. So that's what you're talking about. Are you willing to step out of the story that if you make a decision, you're never allowed to change your mind? Yes. <laughs> oh, because it could be the right decision at the moment, but then conditions can change. Mm -hmm. Right? That happened with one of my coaches. Actually, she uh, joined this company, Savvy, and. It was the right decision. The company looked great. And then a month later, it got it got bought out by another company. And then it just started going in the, in the toilet. And she's like, damn it. <laughs> it was the right decision. Now it's not. Okay. So now, are you willing to step out of the story that you can't trust your own decisions? Yes. There we go. Okay. How's that feel? Um, feels different. Okay. There's another, uh, as I was exploring this, there's another kind of leg to it that 
health related that came up. Uh -huh. um, when I told a, a very close friend of mine who also does coaching um, about the situation, they were trying to help me like talk about finding joy other places in my life. Yep. Just to get through. And yep. um, there was something in me that was blocking me from finding joy from anything not related to productivity whether that's working on my coaching, whether that's uh, learn, you know, like Dr. Ida was saying, taking yeah. a new class or yeah. checking things off the to-do list, productivity in any sense. There's okay. a major, like anything else that he was like, well, you used to get joy out of it. I couldn't call it joy. I was like, I call that amusement, like playing with my cats, but that's okay. not joy. So who taught you that you can only get joy out of being productive? See, I don't know. Usually I'd say parents, but both of them are much better at relaxing than I am. Okay. So any of your teachers feel that way? Any of your friends feel that way? Your friends' parents? Um, the closest thing that comes to mind is uh when I was in in secondary school in high school yep. I didn't I didn't really grind like I, I I I knew how to do just enough to to not skate by but to do kind of decently well but not like valedictorian and yep. my parents took issue with that because I so I was uh -huh. prioritizing being chill being happy enjoying myself and they were like you're smart enough you should be getting straight a's and i was just like yeah whatever okay Ooh, interesting so do you have to punish yourself whenever you're not being productive yeah that feels like part of it are you willing to step out of that story? Yes. The other part of it is kind of an uh, away from motivation. I know, very bad. Of There's a fear that if I stop finding joy in the productivity, that I'll stop trying to excel that i'll stop moving forward that i'll get lazy and go back into you know being addicted to watching tv kind of thing okay so the the issue is that you're not finding joy in things that aren't productive yeah okay so then you said if i stop finding joy and productivity i won't have anything to find joy in you'll get uh, lazy and, and do if you stop finding joy, uh, if you stop finding joy in only productivity, then you'll get lazy and find joy in other places. So it has to only be productivity to make sure you're on point and never lazy. So are you willing to step uh, the story that the only place you allow yourself to feel joy in is when you're being productive? I was going to say it. <laughs> Let's try it. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, you're doing away from motivation. So I have to make sure this happens so that I don't do this rather than I'm just going to find joy and be productive. I'm going to find joy in things I'm not going to, not productive in, but I'm also going to find joy in productivity in. That's just what I'm going to do. So when you go into that that positive mindset, that that intention that doesn't matter if I'm being productive or if I'm not being productive, I'm going to find joy and I'll still end up being very productive overall. You're good. She's just looking at me like, yeah now no it's not, it's on that last shift like it this doesn't usually happen the last shift like it got really anxiety panicky okay. uh, 
Um, Will you get punished if you're not productive? Yeah. Okay. Are you willing to step out of the story that you're going to get punished if you're not productive? Yes. Are you willing to step out of the story that if you allow yourself to take breaks, you're only going to want to take breaks? Yes. (laughs) Yeah. How's that feel? Yeah, that last one helps. It was it was still okay. so <laughs> all right. Yeah, you're allowed to take breaks. In fact, a lot of times the breaks are the periods where we have our big breakthroughs and ideas. And that's what I was just thinking of. It was reminding me of like you know frustrating the response because yeah. you know just like it's like you know I'm going to take a break today, but I don't want to right now. Like I'm still going to take a break for five minutes and then. Yeah. <laughs> That that gave me a little uh, amused, you know, like inner child going, oh my God, that'd be fun. Let's do that. <laughs> so in, in How to Rewrite Reality, there's a story there about my brother studying with his friends. And uh, this was like a very amusing situation when I came home to visit. My dad's like, your brother's in there studying with his friends. And I'm like, okay. And he said, they've been stuck on a problem for a while now. I'm like, okay. And he goes, watch, your brother's going to pee. And I'm like, what? Why do I want to watch that? He goes, just, just watch what happens. And then almost on cue, my, my brother says, guys, I need to take a break. I'll be right back. And he leaves the room they're in where they're all studying. And he goes into the bathroom and he's peeing. Comes out a couple minutes later. He goes, guys, I got it. And I'm like, what? He goes, that's what happens. Whenever he's they're stuck, he always needs to go pee. And by the time he comes out from peeing, he's got the answer. I've watched it happen over and over again. And that's that's his thing. That's his break where his mind does a reset and the answer comes to him. So yeah, breaks are good. Cool. You good? Yeah. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Let's give Elizabeth some love. Hey, did you like that? I hope so. I hope you got a great shift out of it. And just keep in mind, there are hundreds of videos on this channel. You can watch them say yes when I ask you to step out of story and get more shifts. I have clients that do that every single day. Now, if you want to work with me in person, just go to the link down there for Ignite Your Success. And that's where these videos come from. I do a free workshop every month, the second Monday of the month. And the cost for admission, it's not money. It's you're going to end up here on the YouTube channel. If you're okay with that, Happy to work with you. If you want more privacy, we'll then look into some of my programs. We're going to have some more information on them below. Anyway, thank you. We're off. Enjoy your life. Don't be afraid to be the happiest person in the room. Got it? Okay. Bye.